हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आयुषी पालीवाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल ओवरव्यू ऑफ न्यूक्लियर फ्यूल मटेरियल्स पार्ट टू फ्रॉम द पेपर एनर्जी रिलेटेड मटेरियल्स सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट इस सी what are we going to learn in this module from this module you may get to know about the following first availability and preparation of plutonium and thorium as nuclear fuel second fabrication and properties of both plutonium and thorium third alloying mechanism for both plutonium and thorium lastly different types of ceramic fuels available and their properties so students let us start with a brief introduction about plutonium plutonium and its alloys can be utilized as nuclear fuels in both nuclear reactors and space batteries especially 239 plutonium is the main fissile isotope of plutonium that has large fission cross section with slow neutrons additionally this plutonium also has noteworthy fission cross section in the thermal expansion whereas 240 plutonium can work as flammable poison that allows the reactor a constant reactivity through reactor lifetime plutonium is obtained in trace quantity of new naturally uranium and it is mainly manufactured artificially by the transmutation reaction of 238 uranium it looks originally as a bright silvery white metal which changes to some different color after its oxidation in the air its smaller mass high toxicity and pyromorphurity is required its safe handling it can also be recovered from the spent fuel of a thermal reactor via some chemical treatment however useless uranium can be used along with plutonium for the fuels utilized in LMFPRs on the other hand separated plutonium can be used in plutonium burning reactors now we will discuss about the physical properties and crystal structure of plutonium plutonium has its six allotropes within the melting temperature of around 640 degrees celsius where all allotropes are stable only in the limited temperature ranges the thin conduction bands and high density of states of 5f electrons in plutonium makes it energetically favorable for the ground state crystal structure to change to a low symmetry monoclinic lattice at lower temperatures plutonium takes high highly typical symmetrical structures only at elevated temperatures up to 122 degree celsius plutonium is called as alpha phase which adopts a simple monoclinic crystal structure with 19. 816 g per cm3 density within 122 to 206 degree celsius 
it assumes a body centered monoclinic crystal structure with 34 atoms per unit cell from 206 to 319 degree celsius plutonium exhibits a face centered orthorhombic with 8 atoms per unit cell denoted as gamma pu from 319 to 451 degree celsius it takes up a fcc crystal structure with usually four atoms per unit cell denoted as delta pu from 451 to 476 degree celsius it assumes a body centered tetragonal lattice structure with usually two atoms per unit cell plutonium maintains a bcc structure from 476 to 639.5 degree celsius with two atoms per unit cell the polymorphic nature of plutonium is very sensitive to prior treatment history and availability of impurities for pure plutonium substantial hysteresis occurs on cooling and it has various anomalous characteristics for example its polymorphic transformation from beta pu to alpha pu is very low whereas other high temperature phases are reserved even below the transformation temperature except the application of high pressure hence high strain is retained in alpha pu when it is allowed to cool at room temperature and atmospheric pressure besides this martinistic transformations can also take place in plutonium that is from delta pu to gamma pu and from gamma pu to delta pu the figure shows the variation in the linear thermal expansion coefficient with different temperature ranges as shown in the figure the thermal expansion alpha beta gamma phase regimes however the delta phase diminishes with increase in temperature though it has positive temperature coefficient of resistivity the delta prime phase reveals irregular thermal expansion behavior plutonium has the highest value of electrical resistivity among all metals and much like semiconductors both thermal conductivity and specific heat of plutonium increases with increase in temperature furthermore it has low temperature specific heat of any pure element now we will discuss how plutonium can be fabricated majority of plutonium is produced by recycling of spent fuels as it is not a naturally occurring material besides the recycling of unused nuclear weapons could also avail some plutonium plutonium fabrication required to be done with extreme care because it may cause extreme health hazard various techniques including casting rolling extrusion drawing and machining can be used for plutonium fabrication the general characteristics of plutonium such as low melting point high fluidity small volume change and high density makes it a very favorable for fabrication still the characteristic differences between various forms of allotropes makes its fabrication practically implausible plutonium is generally cast 
after melting under controlled environment in an induction furnace in which several materials can be used for the crucibles and molds alpha pu phase is comparatively brittle than its other forms and can be fabricated using press forging whereas beta pu and gamma pu phases also display brittle behavior however they can be plastically worked with care on the other hand delta pu phase is relatively ductile that can be fabricated easily with traditional mechanical techniques however working technique operated at temperature that has limited oxidation is often desired next we will discuss about the mechanical properties of plutonium plutonium is relatively a weak material compared to other structural materials or metals as mechanical properties are highly affected by impurities temperature crystal defects anisotropy and phase transformation hence high temperature application of pure plutonium is not possible the properties of plutonium vary with its allotropes the alpha pu phase has young's modulus of 82.7 to 97 gigapascal shear modulus of 37.2 to 43.4 gigapascal and poisson's ratio of 0.15 tensile yield strength and tensile strength vary between 310 and 380 megapascal whereas compressive yield strength are approximately in the range of 345 to 517 megapascal and elongation to failure and reduction in area are less than 1% at room temperature the stress strain curves of alpha pu and delta pu is shown in the figure the mechanical strength of both alpha pu and beta pu is quite sensitive to temperature the delta pu and epsilon phases have very low mechanical strength the tensile property of polycrystalline alpha pu is more sensitive to strain rate at ambient temperature fine grained alpha pu at room temperature exhibited good ductility which provided evidence that deformation mechanisms that can operate at the higher end of the alpha phase temperature range and into the beta phase range could be grain boundary sliding in addition to dislocation glide now students let us discuss about certain properties of plutonium basically we will be discussing the corrosion properties over here the corrosion resistance of plutonium is very low it corrodes in a similar way as that of uranium with greater rate newly cleaned plutonium shows brighter luster on its surface but loses it quickly as it is exposed to air resulting in olive green plutonium dioxide that produces a powdery surface on the plutonium recent studies have shown that hyperstoichiometric form of plutonium oxide is thermodynamically stable in air atmosphere within a temperature range of 25 to 350 degree celsius atmospheric corrosion gets worse when the metal 
is exposed to air containing moisture. Experiments have revealed that a plutonium sample in dry air for 200 hours has a weight loss of 0.035 mg per centimeter cube. Whereas the, weight whereas the weight loss, it rises up to 1 mg per centimeter cube in air with 5% relative moisture. It has been examined that at 100 degrees Celsius, these differences in corrosion rates from dry air and humid air can reach to the order of 105. Most importantly, the loose oxide produced becomes easily airborne that can create more health risk than the metal itself. The rate of metal oxidation decreases as plutonium is heated further than the beta plutonium phase, phase regime into the gamma plutonium phase region. Remarkably, the oxide film which is created in delta plutonium phase is extra terraceous and it is protective. Nevertheless, this plutonium becomes liable to the development of a brown powdery oxide and ignition may take place at a temperature above 400 or around 450 degrees Celsius. The corrosion of plutonium in aqueous medium can lead to the formation of oxides, hydrides via diffusion of oxide, and hydroxyl ions. The important corrosion issue for clad plutonium is pinning. Now we will discuss about the alloying of plutonium. As discussed earlier, plutonium is a highly fissile material and thus it must be diluted prior to its use. Additionally, its general properties such as physical, chemical and mechanical do not allow it to be used in unalloyed form as it has a stronger affinity to produce intermetallic compounds than uranium. However, both plutonium and uranium have similar behavior of alloy formation. Elements that can form alloy with plutonium must have the following characteristics. First, plutonium needs for Criticality is kept to a minimum. Second, good fabricability features. Third, higher thermal and irradiation stability. Fourth, high corrosion resistance. And lastly, available alloying elements. Alloying elements such as aluminium, gallium, molybdenum, thorium, and zirconium can stabilize delta PU phase. One of its famous alloys is PU gallium alloy that was developed while Manhattan project and was used in the erstwhile Los Alamos fast reactor as a fuel. This alloy increases the corrosion resistance of plutonium by several times. There has been a thoughtful interest in the development of metallic alloy fuels containing fissile fertile combinations LMFBR due to reason that metallic fuels have the obvious advantages of high fissile density resulting in higher breeding ratio as well as shorter doubling time compared to ceramic fuels. The amount of plutonium more than solubility limit in gamma uranium results in an extremely brittle phase which makes alloy 
casting be more difficult and the results in alloys are quite susceptible to radiation damage and thermal cycling the important compositions that have been studied include single phase alloy with better corrosion resistance such as u 21 pu 16 molybdenum and ternary alloy systems like u pu th u pu al u pu iron and so on now students let us start with a brief introduction about thorium thorium is a soft material that has silvery white in color and it retain its shine for a longer time however thorium oxide can quickly lose its luster by turning into gray and finally in black in color it is another important nuclear fuel that has not been employed so far to its full potential as we have seen earlier that thorium is a fertile nuclide which could produce 233 uranium as a fissile nucleide upon capturing a neutron thorium is an important breeder material that exist in nature only in one isotope form thorium 232 and it decays very slowly however other forms of thorium are 234 thorium 230 thorium which occurs as a decay products of thorium and uranium however they exist only in trace amounts thorium is much more abundant than uranium in nature majority of rocks and sands on earth contains small amount of thorium monazite sand which is a rare earth phosphate mineral is an important source of thorium and almost 2/3 of its deposition is found in southern and eastern coast of india let us study the extraction and fabrication of thorium majority of thorium is mined from the monazite ore through a multi stage process the first stage is the process includes a digestion process which defines dissolving the monazite sands in concentrated sulfuric acids at around 120 to 150 degrees celsius for several hours where thorium uranium and rare earth metals pass into the solution to produce sulfates in phosphoric acid after the digestion process the solution is diluted to a ph of 1 using ammonium hydroxide where all the thorium from solution gets precipitated from the solution along with some rare earth metals but consequently increasing the ph to around 2.5 resulting in the precipitation of the rest of the rare earth metals and uranium after which the collected precipitate residue is then treated with nitric acid after which thorium compound can be separated there are numerous techniques to get thorium from thorium compounds such as by reduction in a sealed container bomb reacting thorium tetrachloride tetrafluoride with calcium sodium or magnesium due to high melting point of thorium zinc is often added to produce a low melting thorium however after that zinc 
is distilled off under vacuum to obtain bomb reduced thorium highly pure thorium can be produced by using an iodide treatment and known as iodide thorium the bomb reduced thorium and iodide thorium are having sponge like and loosely packed crystals of highly pure thorium morphology respectively hence they need to be consolidated through ingot metallurgy process in which two types of methods are generally employed including melting under vacuum and arc melting when thorium contains low concentrations of oxygen silicon nitrogen and aluminum impurities then it can be fabricated by various deformation processing techniques including extrusion hot and cold rolling hot forging and swagging though wire drawing technique found to be challenging as thorium has great tendency to stick with the drawing dies in the ingot metallurgy thorium is fabricated into cold compacts using powders produced by hydride method followed by hot pressing under vacuum at 650 degree celsius at a low pressure that can create full density metallic thorium the machining of thorium is easier particularly with greater tool feed rate and low rod speeds now we will discuss about the crystal structure and various properties of metallic thorium thorium has only two allotropes and both are of cubic type at 1400 degree celsius it is called as alpha thorium phase having four atoms per unit cell whereas above 1400 degree celsius it shows a bcc lattice structure denoted by beta thorium hence it can be concluded that thorium has higher melting point and lower density than uranium whereas its thermal conductivity is about 30% higher than that of uranium at 100 degree celsius and about 8% greater at 650 degree celsius the variation in the specific heat at constant pressure that is cp of highly pure thorium is shown in the figure next we will discuss the mechanical properties of thorium the mechanical properties of thorium are sensitive to the impurities crystallographic texture and amount of cold work the purest form of thorium can have a yield strength of around 34 to 124 megapascal ultimate tensile strength of around 110 to 138 megapascal and adequate ductility of 28 to 51% depending on various other factors however commercial thorium contains higher amounts of carbon oxygen and other impurities than that observed in iodide thorium these impurities strengthen thorium in the cast and annealed situation thorium yields and tensile strengths of up to 124 and 172 mega pascal respectively thorium work hardens results in 100% increment in yield strength and 50% in tensile strength 
Now next let us discuss about the corrosion properties of thorium. As discussed before, newly cut thorium has a color of silvery luster which darkens quickly when exposed to air. The oxidation generates protective oxide layer of thorium oxide which can protect up to a temperature of 350 degree celsius. However, at further higher temperatures, the oxide film cracks and the oxidation continues almost linearly. At temperature of about 1100 degrees celsius, the oxidation rate turn out to be a parabolic nature again. Thorium element corrodes with slow rate in high purity water while formation of an adherent oxide film at around 100 degrees celsius. Within the temperature 178 to 200 degrees celsius in water, growth rate of the oxide film becomes rapid and eventually starts breaking up. The reaction becomes very rapid at around 315 degrees celsius. However, thorium possessed good resistance below 900 degrees celsius against most metals barring aluminium. Lastly, let us discuss about the alloying of thorium. In order to improve the mechanical and corrosion properties of thorium, many alloy additions have been attempted. Only few element materials such as zirconium and hafnium allows widespread solid solubility. Though various reactive elements form intermetallic compounds instead of forming solid solutions. Inclusion of two known alloying elements like uranium and indium into thorium enhances the mechanical strength of thorium whereas three other elements like zirconium, titanium and niobium increases corrosion resistance. Now students we will discuss about the ceramic fuels. Metallic fuels shows high neutron economy, excellent thermal conductivity and good thermal shock resistance and should be chosen as natural choice for fuels. Conversely, they are not applicable in high temperature reactors due to their low mechanical strength at high temperatures, phase transformations, etc. On the other hand, the ceramic materials shows superior strength at higher temperatures, low thermal expansion, good corrosion resistance and good radiation stability. Varieties of compounds have been considered as ceramic fuels such as oxides, carbides, nitrides, borides, silicides, sulfides, selenides and so forth. Nonetheless, ceramics based fuels experience the problem of brittleness at lower temperature. First ceramic fuel which we will be discussing is ceramic uranium fuel. Ceramic uranium fuels has three forms. Uranium dioxide, uranium carbide and uranium nitrite. The working capability with uranium dioxide is the highest even though Uranium nitride and uranium carbide remains the best capable fuels for higher performance in the long term. The fuel performance and thermal efficiency improvement requires the fuel element temperature as high as possible. However, in metallic fuels, they have two main issues. First, is central fuel melting and second is excessive air radiation swelling and
creep deformation. In this regard, ceramic fuels have certain advantages in comparison to metallic uranium fuels. First, is more allowable fuel and plant operating temperatures because of higher melting point. Second, good air radiation stability because of the absence of polymorphic phase transformation. Higher corrosion resistance in presence of the chemical inertness and compatibility with fuel cladding. The basic nuclear properties of ceramic fuels are number one, they have large number of fissile uranium atoms per unit volume of the fuel. Second, small neutron absorption cross section preserving the neutron economy. Now students, we'll discuss about the uranium dioxide. The production of uranium dioxide follows the same methods as described earlier except the steps involved produce, producing metallic uranium. Uranium dioxide can be manufactured into various shapes such as pellets, tubes, rods, etc. by standard ceramic processing techniques like powder metallurgy. Second ceramic fuel which we will be discussing is uranium carbide. Uranium carbide has three main compounds that is UC, U2C3 and U2C with the greatest attention in UC. It is often chosen as the perfect nuclear fuel compared to the metallic uranium and uranium dioxide. Uranium carbide UC also shows excellent thermal and irradiation stability. The higher uranium atomic density and high thermal conductivity is also exhibited by this fuel. Last ceramic fuel which we will be discussing is uranium nitride. Uranium nitride system has three ceramic compounds such as UN, U2N3 and UN3 with uranium mononitride UN as the most and the best stable nuclear fuel. UN has a rock salt FCC crystal structure and a theoretical density of around 14.32 gram per centimeter cube. It keeps its stoichiometry up to high temperatures and becomes non stoichiometric beyond a temperature of 1500 degrees Celsius. The table below summarizes the various features of different uranium ceramic fuels in a tabular form. So students, let us summarize what we have learned from this module. In this lecture, we have provided and discussed a review of both metallic and ceramic fuels and their various properties. Among metallic fuels, plutonium and thorium are discussed. Uranium was already discussed in our previous lecture. Besides metallic fuel materials, ceramic fuels such as uranium dioxide, uranium nitrite and uranium carbide as well as plutonium based oxide fuels and thorium oxides are also covered. The metallic and ceramic fuels are found to have both advantages and disadvantages of their own. Thank you.